Okay, so welcome back to another synth uh, tutorial. And on this one, we need to talk about the Prophet 5. Now on this one, I'm not gonna explain every single uh, part on detail. For example, I'm not gonna explain what an NADSR is, or maybe what a filter is, or how uh, what an oscillator or what an LFO is. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna already assume that you already have some experience with this and you already know the basic stuff. If you don't and you're starting with synthesis, I've already made some, uh, you know, some other kind of a series, uh, tutorial series with the Arturia ones, uh, with the, uh, the Mini B, uh, the DX7, the uh, June and the Overheim. So, man, and those ones are do the whole detail, the whole explaining. So you can start there and then maybe you can come back here. So everything is going to be in, on, in steps. So first I'm going to start with the default. So uh, notice that everything is time coded. So you can watch some part today and maybe watch a different part, maybe tomorrow. So we can start with the oscillators. So you get an oscillator A and then you get an oscillator B. So of course, this is the mixer. This is how we're going to be, uh, you know, uh, providing volume for the oscillators. If I turn everything down, you know, there's no sound. Now the oscillator number A is going to be this one. Now you can go up 24 semitones or down 24 semitones. Now you can do a saw or you can do a triangle. Now the triangle can be modulated with a pulse width. You know, this is a manual modulation. Right? So far, pretty standard controls. Now, what you can do with this one, if you turn both on, you get a combination of the saw and the square, right? So then you get the sync control. Now, this is something that all synthesizers can do, and actually, like I said, it's something pretty common, it's pretty basic. Uh, the sync, what we will do, it will convert one of the oscillators uh, as a slave, to a slave. Uh, to the other one. So in this case, how this synthesizer works is that the oscillator number A is going to be a slave of the oscillator number B, the oscillator B. So for example, if I do a sync and I play something, there's no difference. But if I start changing the frequency, notice it's doing that. And it's because the oscillator A is being forced to restart its cycle according to the oscillator number B. Notice that we don't get a change in tune. Now it's, I'm playing a C note and it, it always sounds like a C, right? And it's because it's following the oscillator B. If I play a C and I change the oscillator B, then it's going to change. If not, you know, nothing happens. So this is the slave and this is the master whenever you enable sync. So that's it. This is what the oscillator A can do. Pretty simple. Then you have the oscillator number B and it's a bit more powerful. The oscillator number B can still go 24 up or 24 down, same idea, but on this one you get a fine control. So this can go from zero to one semitone up. So if I go there and I do one semitone up right here on this one, and I enable the B and disable the A of course, and I play a C note, we get that sound. If I go back to zero semitones and I go up, we get the same sound, so it's one semitone up. But of course, you go through the all all the in betweens of that semitone. Again, just pretty standard control. Now you can do a saw, you can do a triangle, you can do a square, but you can still do triangle and square. Same thing that the oscillator A. But now you can do a triangle and you can do a saw. or just a triangle, or maybe a square and a triangle, or maybe all the same, all at the same time. So with the square, you can still do pulse width modulation, and then you get two extra options. You get the keyboard and you get the low frequency. So the keyboard by default, it's on. So when you disable this, it means that is going to disconnect the keyboard from this oscillator. So the oscillator is not listening to the keyboard anymore. So if I play a C, it's gonna sound like this. And if I play a high C, it's gonna sound the same. It's because it's disconnecting the keyboard. So how can we, you know, make this in tune? Well, you use the frequency. I'm gonna play whatever key right here. And this is how you can control it. 
Now, what's the point of this? Now, you have two, uh, pretty much two, two options. First, I'm going to disable the keyboard and I'm going to go to the oscillator number A and pretty much I'm going to put it right there. So now every time I press a key, of course, the oscillator B will always play the same frequency, the same note. But the oscillator number A is going to be connected to the keyboard so we can play, a, a, you know, a melody with that one. Uh, this is like a backpipe would work, for example. You know, we have a fundamental tone in the background that will always, you know, just kind of keep going, keep going, and you play something at the top. Well, pretty much the same idea. Now, this keyboard uh, is not just for that. It's uh, for something more useful, which is the low frequency keyboard right here. I'm sorry, the low frequency mode. So this one, what we'll do, you will turn the oscillator number B into a low frequency oscillator, an LFO, right? So notice if I just disable this, we get the clicks and it's because now the oscillator B is super slow. So we can use it as an LFO. Of course, you can control, control the speed with this one, but we have a major problem. If I play a low key, it's super slow. If I play a high key, it's super fast. And this is why you get the keyboard. You can disconnect it. So now the movement is going to be consistent all the time, depending, you know, it's not going to go in different speeds if you play a high C or a low C. This is very important when you do a modulation. Now you have a constant LFO. So this is what the oscillators can do. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You can play both at the same time. And I'm going to go to a default patch again, because whenever you enable both, notice that they sound big. And they are playing the same frequency, the same waveform. And it's because by default, Arturia is D kind of a, you know, moving the uh, fine control 10%, 11% up. So now the oscillator number B is a little bit detuned from the oscillator number A. If I all, go all the way down, they sound pretty much in the same place. There's still, you know, there's still a little bit of detuning, which is very natural. But, you know, you can just offset it. And get that, you know, big sound. So all of this, again, all the oscillators go to the mixer section. You can control the oscillators. You have A, the A and the B, we already know that. And then you have the noise control. It's just white noise. All right, simple enough. So with this one, you get a pretty standard filter. This is a 24 dB per octave filter. And again, I will start on a default patch so we can all start from the same place. So you get a saw, right? I'm gonna start cutting. And notice it is pretty aggressive because it's a 24 dB per octave, which is fine. It's very normal. Right. Then you get your resonance control. And this is the peak that you will create at a break point of whatever you are on the cutoff. Notice that we have the peak right there. Now, whenever you pass seven or and a half and maybe you reach eight, it's going to start resonating. You can even turn the oscillator off. No. Turn the oscillator down. And if I go maybe all the way down and something like that, you can you can go and play sine waves. You know, you get kind of a, that sine wave tone. All right, something like that. So, okay, so I'm going to go maybe there. I'm going to still play the oscillator A. And now we know that we can, you know, get that sweet resonance. Also notice that where, with this type of filter, when you go up in resonance, the low frequency, whatever it is that you're playing right here, is going to be attenuated when you boost the resonance. Notice that this part is going down. It's very common with this type of filter, just the way it works. Love it, love it or hate it. Okay, so then you get the keyboard control. Now I'm gonna move this down. And I'm going to go there. So you can have it, you know, get it just, you know, 100% on one or maybe on zero or maybe, you know, somewhere in between. Now, if you don't know what the keyboard, this is the keyboard control. That's what it does. 
Now, if you don't know what it is, uh, let me just, you know, go all the way down. So we are cutting a lot of the high frequencies, right? So if I play a low, we can hear it because we are cutting the high frequencies. And now even if I keep going up, we there's a point right at the middle where we start, you know, not hearing the, the keys. And the high keys are just... We, we don't get them. And it's because, of course, we are cutting the high frequencies. And this is a problem. That would be a problem, it's just the way it works. So this one will, will create will create kind of an envelope and the filtered cutoff will react differently to the higher keys and to the lower keys. So now lower keys are gonna remain the same, but at the break point, the higher keys are gonna be audible. And again, this is an envelope that is kind of a kind of a creating behind the scenes. And now the cutoff is, you know opening a little bit more when we play higher keys and not opening when we play lower keys. Okay, so then, of course, what I want to do, I want to maybe do a little bit of resonance and I want to play something and I want a little bit of modulation on this cutoff, something like that, right? Right now I'm doing it manually. So what I want to do, I want to use the envelope. So this is the amount of uh, envelope we are going to be using to modulate the cut of uh, control. So I will put the envelope amount right here at 50%. And it's because if you go all the way up, it's super aggressive. It's super aggressive. We're going we're gonna to see this. So how we make this modulation is going to be with the ADSR control. A pretty, you know, pretty standard ADSR. Told you that I'm not going to, you know, do a lot of explaining on this because I assume that you already know how an ADSR works. But this is the ADSR for the cutoff. So if I wanted to do, I want to do a slow kind of, kind of a, you know, going up, I'm going to go up on the attack and notice that it's very fast. And when you reach the seven, eight, then it's going to one second. And then, you know, you can go up to six or seven seconds. But, you know, it's just this final part. It's super slow there. Now, of course, at some point it's going to go down. This is the decay. Right now, it's half a second, which is very fast. If I want to make it slow, I'm going to go maybe there. And it's going to take some time to go back. Then you get the sustain, of course. Which is going to be where you're going to be sustaining. And this is, a, no, it is, is a level. It's not a time-based control. So maybe I want to sustain it, but I don't want to go all the way back. I want to stay right here. So the sustain is just going to do that. It's going to go up and down, but it's going to stay at the health point. And the release is going to be, uh, of course, what happens when I release the key. Right now, I'm just pressing and holding. And if I release it, you know... It just dies. And this is because the, the release of the amp is super slow. If I want a slow release, I need to, you know, make this one bigger. And is that, you know, it fades out, fades out on a different way. Right. So this is how, you know, the, the, the ADSR of the filter works. You can go very small amounts and just get a little bit of that. Or you could go crazy and it's going to be much aggressive. It's going to stay at the top much more time if you're using a long decay and a long sustain. And of course, if you go all the way up in the sustain, you're just disabling the decay stage. That's pretty, you know, that's how it works. Notice I'm going really aggressive. Sustain is all the way down, still goes up and stays up there and then goes down. So again, the amount is very important depends on, on what you want to do. So, okay, so that's the filter. Then you get the amplifier, which is the ADSR of the amp. And this is, uh, you know, volume. So uh, it will just go all the way down and maybe you're gonna put the cutoff right there. No resonance, just to get the dumb sound. So of course this one will control the volume, the ADSR for the volume that goes out of the uh, synthesizer. And again, it's gonna slowly go up. At some point, it needs to go down. And we are sustaining. Gonna go all the way down to the sustain. It's gonna go up and fast. It's gonna go down. It's because it's 250 milliseconds is almost nothing. If I want it slow going down, 
I need to go up. If I want to disable or maybe just stay in between, it's gonna go up and maybe it's gonna, I'm gonna keep it right there. I know it's going up and then down and it's staying right there. The sustain will disable the decay stage, so there's no decay. And remember what happens when we release the keys, that release is going to kind of uh, fade the sound out. Pretty easy, pretty classic. So let me just go to something more, uh, more normal, let's say. Right? Something more normal. So then you have the tune control. So the tune control is just a global tune. This will, uh, of course, detune both oscillators and it's again you, you, you're not going to be able to go it's just a little bit up and a little bit down just flat and sharp uh you cannot go I don't know, tw 12 semitones up then you have a, a reference tone and this is an a so if i go to an a and maybe i play this one notice it's just a reference a reference tone just to tune the uh, the uh you know the oscillators now since uh, of course this is digital it's just a plugging and we can see how many semitones and it's always perfect it's kind of a pointless but you know just just in a just something nice so then we have the unison control now of course you can play you can make a chord let me just do a little bit of cutoff a little bit of resonance and a little bit of that you know just to make it just a bit nicer. Something like that. All right, that's fine. Okay, so of course, um, the unison, what it will do right now, the synth, you can play a chord one, two, three, and then that just, that's just gonna work. But when you go to unison, it means that you will turn this synthesizer into a mono synth. You cannot do chords anymore. Because I'm pressing three keys and it's just not working. What it does, it will stack all available voices. Let me just mute something I get right here. I have a kid and he goes to school and someone else needs to pick the, the kid up, you know, pick the kid uh, from school and no one picked it up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's the messages I'm getting. It was, you know, it's already solved. So, okay, so let's go back to our business. We have unison. Now, when you enable, it's a monosynth. Now, this can do five unis, five voices. You can do much more when you go to the configuration, but by default, it's five voices. So now all five voices are going to be stacked on top of each other. That's how unison works. Of course, yeah, I'm assuming that you already know this. But again, notice that Whenever you enable unison, you are on the mono synth type of things, type of, uh, you know, scythe. So the detune will detune the available voices. Right now we are using, you know, a little bit of that. Notice it's just doing a lot of detuning. Now, as you use more voices, of course, this is just going to be a bit more noticeable. And as you offset both oscillators and maybe add a little bit more brightness, notice that it's kind of a phasey, and it's because all you know the uh, all the uh, voices are just stacked on top of each other. As you detune them. We get just that big sound. Now, you can still do this on poly mode. If I uh, make a chord, notice that the voice art is detuning. Let me just disable this uh, just to make it a bit more obvious. I'm gonna disable the envelope and maybe go there just to play something lower. Can you hear that? Is detuning the voices a little bit, just a little bit. So this still works on poly mode. Okay, so let me go back to uh, the default patch, right? So we are starting again from the start. And we got the oscillator A, no amount, no modulation, you know, pretty, pretty easy stuff so far. So now we're going to start talking about what we can do with all of this, which is the modulation state of the, of the synthesizer.
So you might be thinking, you know, okay, so this is the LFO. This is how, you know, we enable it. And then it's just going to start LFOing. Uh, it's just not that simple. This, it's a little bit weird. And right here, you get different types of modulation. You get this one right here at the, at the bottom, at the top. This one is like the main control of the LFO. And then you control the LFO with the mod wheel. That's how it works. So right here, it says wheel and then mod. And then you can choose two destinations to run your modulation. You have the LFO, or you can use the noise as a modulator. And you can use a combination of both. For now, I'm just going to go to the LFO, right? I'm just going to keep it classic. Go to the LFO. Now, what can you modulate uh, with an LFO, with this LFO, with this synth? So you can do filter modulation. You can do the pulse width of the oscillator number B. That's what says PWB. So you can just do a modulation in this one on the, you know, pulse width, something like that. Then you get the same thing for the A, something like that. You no, know, I'm just kind of, a, you know, simulating it. And then right here, it says frequency oscillator number B. So this is the pitch. So you're going to be oscillating, uh, kind of a modulating the pitch. And the other one is the frequency of the A. Now, the cool thing is that you can do, and it's going to sound crazy, you can do all at once. And that's super, super cool. Now let's start easy. Uh, I will go to the filter. So let me go there. I will put maybe the filter something out right there. And what we want to do, we want to do a little bit of modulation on the filter. So I'm going to enable it. We are using the LFO. Now nothing happens, right? There's no modulation. And it's because the mod is going to decide how much modulation we are going to be doing. Notice it's aggressive if we go up. Now, of course, by default, is going to be a triangle. But you can change it to a saw, or actually a combination of this both. Or you can change it to a, kind of a more on, on and off with the with with square. And again, you can do combination of, a combination of them three. So then you have the rate control, which is how fast it's going to go. Super slow or super fast. And then you get the sync control. So the sync, it's uh, not like the sync. It's a completely different thing. This is going to sync your, um, you know, the rate control to your DAW. So now it's just going on a time base. It's just not going on a frequency uh, kind of a mode. Notice it goes, uh, it goes in hertz. Well, now it's just linked to the tempo of your DAW. Let me go just to triangle because it's a bit easier to hear. So with the frequency no, again, how aggressive, less aggressive. So you can do the pulse width of the B. So I'm gonna go to the B. I'm gonna do this one. And maybe you're gonna put it right there. We're not. Now we are just modulating the pulse width and the filter. Let's do just the pulse width. All right, pretty, pretty simple. That is, if I go here, the modulation is something like this. So when we reach right here, it's like a cutting sound because it's too narrow. Then you can do the same thing with the A. So I'm going to go to the A and do this. Of course, I need to do this. Now, I'm doing a little cutoff. That's why we don't see it. Then we have the this one, which is going to be the uh, is going to be the frequency. So it's just going to modulate the frequency of the oscillator number B. So if you think about this, this is kind of a vibrato, not tremolo, of course, vibrato. Don't confuse it. And same thing with the frequency of the A. And at this point, I'm kind of repeating myself. I believe that this is a bit obvious to you at this point. So the only modulation source, and I'm going to do it with a filter, is going to be the noise. Let me just remove that one. Notice that we are using the LFO. If I go all the way up, now the noise, which is this noise, 
is going to be modulating the filter and notice it goes crazy and it's because of course with the with the noise you get a lot of peaks it's it's very random -y. very random so you get that you know you get that sound just not a bad sound it's just a sound and then of course you can come combinate make a combination of both a little bit of more control LFO and a little bit of randomness of the noise. So this is how the main LFO works. Weigh the frequency mod and what you only the only thing you can modulate is the destinations right here. With the LFO, with the noise or with the blend and again this is how you control the LFO. That's it. That's it. Now you can and you you know you have another modulation source which is going to be the poly mod. So I'm going to go back to default just to show you this uh, template and default. So but, but again on, on old synths, not old synths on pretty much any synth, you mainly have you know different sources to do modulation. You get LFO uh, and, and you get envelopes. Now depends on the synthesizer. You can use the envelope of a filter or maybe the envelope of something else or sometimes you have a dedicated envelope just to do modulation. And on this one, you can do this. And this is the polymod. Notice it says filter envelope. So this is going to be using the envelope of the filter to do some kind of modulation. Where? Well, frequency A, which is the pitch of the, of the oscillator number A, you can do pulse width modulation of the number A and you can modulate the cutoff filter. So if I do something like that, let me, let me just, you know, I'm going to do no envelope amount, a little bit of resonance, and I'm going all the way up on the filter envelope. I'm going to do a little bit of attack, maybe no sustain, something like this, you know, maybe, maybe some, something obvious. Let me just go there and nothing happens. Now, if I enable filter, we are doing the same thing we are able to do with the filter right here, with the envelope amount, but now we are doing it with this. Now, maybe you're wondering, you know, why do we get this? You know, we can already do is do this from here. And it's because you all, you have another option, which is the oscillator number B, but you can do all the other, other things. Which is going to be, for example, the pulse width, uh, uh, the, pul width the, the pulse width of the oscillator A. So right now we are not using a square, so we're going to use a square. Notice how? Let me just make it cut off all the way up. No amount, you know, no modulation right here. Notice how how it sounds. First it starts very thin and then it grows, and it's because we have this. Uh, let me just do sustain. Maybe no there. Let me go there. Notice it sounds different. And it's because the filter, this filter, is modulating the pulse width. If I do something maybe like that, notice it sounds different. It starts in a different way. Notice that movement right there. Let me just maybe start there starts thin and then grows. And this is the, the filter of course doing its job. So again you can use the filter to modulate the pulse width of the A. Now then you can do again the same thing but you can do it with the frequency which is the pitch of the oscillator number A. Now, there's almost no release on the amp, so I'm going to add a little bit of release. Fine. So you're doing just a pitch, a little bit of pitch modulation with the filter envelope. Now, at the same time, you can do both. You can do the filter. You can do the pulse with uh, modulation. It's going to, of course, sound a little bit weird. And it's because of the pulse width that we have right here. Maybe the envelope is not the right, but that's fine. Let's go do the away. Let me go right here. All right. 
me be. So you can get pretty unique sounds by combining all of this. Same thing if you go right here at the bottom, if you start doing all this craziness, you know, with the mod wheel, you're gonna start getting, you know, this kind of a sound. Now, let me just go back to a uh, template, uh, to the default template. Now, notice the polymod can do oscillator number B. And I've told you that we can turn the oscillator B into a low frequency oscillator. So, here's where. So, instead of using the filter or using the LFO with the mod wheel, we can say, okay, so I want to do some filtering and I want to use oscillator number B as a modulation source. So if I bring this down and I play something, notice it's just going very fast. And it's because we are using the oscillator number B, notice it's off, as a modulation source. Now, of course, it's super fast. You can go slower. But right there, you know, you get that speed. The fine control again is going to allow you to go super slow or super fast. Now, of course, you can change right here. Now remember that right now we are not using the oscillator B uh, as a free uh, as a low frequency. Uh, I can just turn it on right here, and now of course we get you know more more of a low frequency oscillator. Let me just go there and put it right there. Now we are doing the filter. If we go up, of course it's going to go faster. And remember the problem I told you. If I play low keys, it goes super slow. If I play high keys, it goes super fast. So we can disable the keyboard and now the same speed will be maintained throughout the whole keyboard. The fine tune of course will Modify a little bit, but it's just not enough because it's too slow. But again, at the end of the day, you know, uh, you do have a lot of modulations and a lot of things you can do. Now, of course, in modern uh, synthesizers, you have a lot more options, but this is, you know, not for that. This is just a classic synth. If you want to create serum or, or silent kind of a sound, just use serum, all right? Or uh, silent or whatever is that you like to use or pigments if you're you know an Arturio fan all right so i'm starting back on a default template because this is going to be a little bit weird to explain now uh right here you get the glide and you have three modes it's a bit confusing because then you have legato right here we're going to talk about this later but then it says off then it says on and then it says legato on so uh, this works mostly when you are using, uh, you're doing on unison or you're working on mono mode, uh, pretty much. So I'm going to go to unison for now and maybe it's going to be a bit too aggressive. So I'm going to do a little bit of cutting off. Still too aggressive. That's a bit better. Let's say. I mean. Okay, uh, that's fine. So. So, of course, then you have the glide. I'm going to go and just go up and then off, of course, is it's just nothing, right? It's just nothing. Now, if I click once, it's going to say legato on. And then if I do once, it's going to say leg, it's just going to say on. So what's the difference? Now, if I go to this one and remember, we are on unison, which is mono mode. I play a key. There is no, there's no legato. You know, is this? There's no glide. I mean, so 
you know, how does this work? So the thing is that for Legato on, uh, to for the cloud to work on this mode, it means that we need to press a key and we need to play other keys in order to get that. Now, notice I'm playing, maybe I'm gonna be playing this C. Can you see, right? look at the keyboard right there. If I play a high C, you know, something that goes on top of that note is not gonna work. And it's because by default, the lower notes are going to be the one that will do the trick. I'm going to go to a higher C so we can see it. You can hear it a bit better. Notice that it's doing the glide and then going back to the original note. And it's because I'm holding this one. So this is how the legato works. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, so I want to do the same thing, but I want to do it with the higher keys, but it's just not working. This is because of the play modes. So some of them are going to be work better with poly mode and some of them are going to work better with mono mode. So last is going to be, it doesn't care if it's high or low priority, is going to uh, go and use whatever key you play, the last key play. So if I do the same trick, I'm going to just maybe hold that C. I play up and it's doing it. And if I do down, still doing it but in order for this to work you need to you need to hold a key that's the legato on and the other one it doesn't give an f what we do is going to glide to that now notice if i play a low c and then i play a high c or just whatever high key is going to go all the way from the that last key played to the next one. And then again, this is part of this for this. So if I do something like that, notice it's just going back and this going up, going back and then going up and then going down. But if I just get closer to notes that are very close, the, uh, the glide is just super short. Because remember, it's gliding from the last note you play. In this case, this doesn't work this this way when we change this. Now, then you have the poly mode, and the poly mode works on a kind of a different way because you're you're playing many keys at the same time, and depend on the keys that you play, it's just going to do the glide, of course. Just a bit different. Same thing with the legato. If I oh no, that one, this one, the legato on. There we go. So on poly mode, it just works a little bit different. All right. Okay, so let me go back again to default. And we're going to talk about the last thing, which is going to be this controls right here at the bottom. Of course, volume means control. And hold, it means that if you press a key, it's just going to hold it. It's going to hold. It's just going to hold it for you. Of course, that's pretty obvious. Now we are in poly mode. So every key that you press, I'm going to do a little bit of cut off because it's just, you know, crazy. It's, every key you press is going to remember it. And now it's playing three keys. And at some point, it's just going to get loud. Now remember that we are in poly mode. And you can do five uh, voices. But, you know, if you go to configuration, you can do a lot more. Now, then you have the release. Uh, let, me, let me see if I can find kind of an example. Let's say I, I, I want, I'm playing something, right? Let's say uh, you're playing something that has a very long release. So this button, it means that the release stage is on. As soon as I turn it off, go, it just goes bye-bye. So what it does, it will kind of a disable the release stage. So now you're using this uh, with a, 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 as an attack, decay, and sustain. There's no release. And as soon as you turn it on, of course, it's back on. Now maybe you think, okay, so why do we get this feature? So if you think about this uh, right now, let's say that you're just making some pets, right? And you have a long release because And at some point, you just need to kind of uh, start doing a solo or something. This is a performance kind of a button. And then you just turn it off. 
And without changing anything, you can start doing your melody right here at the top. So, you know, that, that this is why you get this button. But this is a performance kind of a thing that you get with the uh, hardware. All right, so back on a different template. And I want to create a very good example so you can understand how this works. Because it's a bit uh, weird to explain. This is something that very old synthesizers have. Actually, a lot of synthesizers have this. For example, the Monopoly has this. Uh, the legato mode uh, on the Monopoly, I believe it's called the auto damp, something like that. Um, so the legato mode works on not on poly, it works on you know mono. So I'm going to go to unison, do a little bit of that. I'm going to do a little bit of that, and uh, I want to create a good example so you can really hear the difference. So maybe I'm going to do a little bit of cut of a little bit of uh, you know just just that. So let's see how it sounds. That, that's fine. Let's be a little bit of release. And I'm gonna bring the oscillator number two just to get, you know, just to get something else. Maybe something like there. Okay, I believe that, that that's gonna work. Okay, so right now, if I, uh, we are on legato mode. I'm sorry, we are on unison mode. So it means that we can play only one key at a time. So if I press and hold, and I press another one, we just get nothing. I need to press and release, and press and release, and every time we do so, the envelopes are kicking in, you know? The envelopes are just moving this and working on the amplifier. It's just the way it works. Now, the legato mode, what it will do, it will kind of... Uh, this allow uh, the envelopes from re-triggering if you are doing a legato move. So I'm going to press a key and notice that we get it. Now I'm going to go and press other keys. Let me, can you see it right here? I'm pressing this key. Uh, maybe I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to press other keys. Still doesn't work. And this is because the play mode right here. Remember I told you some of these modes work with the poly mode, some of the other ones work best with the mono mode. So I'm gonna select the last one. So now I'm gonna be playing this. Legato is on. So if I play new, new notes, notice that the envelopes are just not triggering again. Notice that? Now, if I turn the legato on, every time I hit a key, it's going to trigger the filter. That's what it means. I know it's, you know, very, a very simple thing, but it's very useful. Depends on, of course, what you want to do. Now, again, on poly mode, it's just, you know, the same idea, but it's just a little bit different. Because, again, you're just doing poly, so you're always sustaining a note. But it still, you know, it still works the same. But the trick is that you need to change the play mode. If not, it's just not going to work properly. Now, on very old synthesizers, uh, for example, I have the Monopoly. In Monopoly, you have the same issue. Uh, you don't have a play mode, right? You, you just can go high priority or low priority. Uh, you don't have all these options. So... Okay, so that's it. That's pretty much the whole synthesizer. So then what you get right here, and I really like they added this feature. So this, what it's going to be at the end of the day, is what you get with the uh, actual hardware unit. It's all the, you know, the patches, the default patches. You already get them right here when you navigate. Notice that you get the patches from the Pro BS, or maybe let's see if I can find some from the Prophet 5. Uh, right here, you get profit. Notice that you get it right there. Is the uh, is the patches profit BS? So it is the original patches you get with the original hardware. So you get uh right here eight uh, kind of a memories, eight programs, and you get four different banks. By clicking on this one, you're gonna be changing the bank right here. That is this bank two, bank three, bank four. Bank uh, five and bank one. So you get five different banks with eight different memories. And every 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 memory it's gonna be the 
is going to be a sound. And this, what they say is that they just recreated the original patch. And I cannot confirm this because I don't have a profit. I would love to have one, but you know, it's very hard to get. So, okay, so then the last thing we're going to be discussing is going to be the effects. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time. This is a very classic thing you get with all the Arturia plugins. You just get a nice chorus. Let me just do something else. That's fine. You get a very nice chorus with three different types. Of course, uh, you know, this one is, uh, is going to be a little bit more aggressive. And the other one is just going to be a little bit, you know, more aggressive and more aggressive. You get a dry, wet, depth and rate. Pretty simple. Just a standard course. And under delay, you get, you know, a nice delay. And you can offset the, the time from the left and the right. And notice that you have a sync control. So you can sync it to the uh, tempo of your DAW and even control the amount of feedback from the sides. Now, uh, the new versions of uh, this software, the you know the synths of Arturia, the V collection, are uh, just uh, are coming with uh, more uh, effects, and it's because you know it's just much useful. I, I would love to have some reverb, maybe some saturation, some to do some more you know advanced uh, uh, sound design. And you don't get it. You don't get it with this plugin. I believe in maybe some future future update. They will, uh, you will get much more, um, you know, a lot more options than just a chorus or uh, a delay. Now, then you have the VS, and this is a completely different vis beast. It works in a different way, and it has a, a different sound. So I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna stop it, and I'm gonna create a new video just for the Profit BS because there, there, there's quite a lot of explaining. If you're watching. Maybe you're saying, dude, this looks very complicated. And it's actually, uh, it's easier than this one. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's easier than the, than, than, the, than the five. It's just easier. It looks confusing, but it's not. So, you know, just, just trust me. So we're gonna, I'm gonna be releasing the uh, next video maybe in a couple of days, a few days. I'm gonna explain how this works, how everything works. So you can know how it, how to operate it and just maybe get sounds from this one. And you can get sounds that you cannot get with this one. It's a different synth. If you think about this, it's one of the first wavetable synthesizers. Right. So, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to uh, talk about this one. And then at the very end... We are going to talk about how to use the modulation matrix and come and, and just you know make a combination of this synth with this synth to get more options and you know reroute all the things we need to reroute just to get more LFOs, to get more envelopes, just to get more things. But that's gonna be on the next one. So hopefully you hopefully you'll learn something on this one. And uh remember to like, subscribe, and remember to check Patreon, of course. And see you on the next one.